Hey guys, my name's Dale, this is Think Fact, and welcome to If Tank, 10 interesting facts that almost nobody knows. So, let's get started. Penguins are one of the most beloved animals on Earth. Flightless birds that are pretty tame around people, stylish, and they have that signature walk. But have you ever thought about why they walk like that? It's like watching an old man struggle to try to get to the bathroom. Most penguin breeds have to throw the entire side of their body into each step, seemingly as if they didn't have any needs. But the thing is, is all bird species have knees. I mean, just look at this flamingo. So yes, penguins do have knees, but they're not located in the place you might assume they would be. This is because penguins have knees that protrude outward right beside the rib cage, almost in a constant 90 degree angle. Similar to if a person was trying to walk forward in a sitting or squatting position. Now imagine trying to walk normal like that. This is something that they adapted over time in order to make their bodies more forward-facing and aerodynamic, for easy travel and easy cuddling. You know, because Antarctica. They also have an angle much more similar to that of humans than most other bird species. You know, that way they wouldn't like get damaged or fall off in the cold. But it's definitely interesting that their bodies adapted to look like that, and it explains quite a bit. Taiwan is an interesting place, a beautiful island with an intense geopolitical atmosphere, and a unique branch of the greater Chinese culture. But interestingly enough, the Chinese population on Taiwan today are descendants of Han colonizers who came to the island in the 1600s and are the second major group of people to have reached the island. Taiwan was originally populated for thousands of years by Austronesians, people who were similar to Filipinos and Polynesians and so forth. They make up about 2% of the Taiwanese population today and had to deal with a level of colonization that was very similar to what was seen in the Americas and Oceania. Given the desire by the colonizing Han Chinese people to integrate them into the Chinese culture, they've had a very hard time remaining a distinct cultural group in the past few hundred years. That said, in recent times with the help of the Taiwanese government recognizing tribes, there has been a revival in the cultural identities of the people, ranging from clothing, music, and native languages. But as seen with most indigenous populations that are a minority, it can be an uphill battle. Humans are tiny when you compare us to the universe as a whole. Or are we? If you were to compare if the average human is closer in size to the sun or a helium atom, which is smaller than hydrogen, you would find that people, on average, are closer in size to the sun than helium. But if you were to compare whether the average human is closer in size to the Milky Way galaxy in contrast to a helium atom, you would find that we are closer to a helium atom. But then again, if you were to compare if the average human is closer in size to the Milky Way galaxy or a neutrino, you find that we are closer in size to the Milky Way galaxy. So the question is, are humans on the bigger end of things that exist within the universe or on the smaller end of things that exist within the universe? To do that, let's look at the biggest proposed thing in existence, the observable universe, and the smallest proposed thing in existence, string from string theory. Drum roll please, because the average human is actually closer in size to the observable universe by far than we are to string in string theory. So humans are technically, if all the proposals check out, closer to the bigger end of things within existence than we are to the smallest things within existence. Andriana Castoli was the voice for Snow White in Disney's animated classic Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Being the American-born daughter of an Italian opera singer, her mother, she had the opportunity to study under her mom in Rome, giving her a very competitive advantage in terms of singing. While living in Los Angeles, her family built up a reputation and was contacted by Disney representatives who were looking for talented singers for an up-and-coming role in a project. Adriana, who was listening in on the phone call between her father and one of those representatives, started singing, embarrassing her father, but was invited by the representative to try out. She would eventually seal the deal with her getting the role once she started singing simply with the notes and without any music whatsoever. By the time she was done, she earned about $970 or about $16,000 in today's money, and by the looks of it, her career was going to take off from there. But there was an issue. Disney didn't want her or any of the voice actors to get any screen credits for their participation in the movie. Walt Disney felt that it would spoil the illusion of the film if people knew who the voice actors were. Going as far as to prevent Adriana from appearing on America's most popular radio show at the time with Jack Benny, essentially ending her career right as it was starting. 
She went on to never appear in another Disney movie, and she only ever had small, uncredited singing roles in other movies. One such being the in the Tin Man song in The Wizard of Oz. Horses are truly amazing animals, and we can think how far we have come as a species due to horses, both figuratively and literally. But out of all the things we associate horses with, there's one specific one that up until recently hasn't been really valued all that much, and it's their unbelievably amazing sense of smell, an ability that can rival even some of the best bloodhounds. They are so effective, in fact, that there has been a massive push for equine air scenting. This is where they train horses to do the work of bloodhounds for specific terrain-based situations. Dogs are better in the brush, but airborne scents rise, giving horses an advantage given how tall they are. They also don't need to rely on having an item to smell before they go out looking, because they have the ability to pick up the most recent scent in a given area. Exceedingly helpful when it comes to looking for people. After many successful tests, horses have proven themselves to be extremely successful when it comes to trying to search for things by means of scent. And currently in the northeast coast of the United States, they are training horses to be able to do just that. And if you're interested in learning more, check out the links below. How many generations back in your family can you go? I asked this question in a video I made a while back, and it got me curious to what is the actual record? The longest traceable confirmed family tree where they can trace every single individual back belongs to the family tree belonging to Confucius, the Chinese philosopher born back in 551 BCE. With 83 individual generations branching down from Confucius all the way to the modern day, his family tree is the current record holder. As of today, there are an estimated 2 to 3 million people who are descendants of Confucius. But with that, Confucius is not technically the furthest back the records suggest, though people do typically just count up to him. But his family tree can be traced at least another 43 generations behind him, making 126 individual generations with every person being accountable for. From him, we can go all the way back to an individual named Xi of Shang, who is typically upheld at the furthest back of the tree. But we do know after Confucius, due to how prestigious he was in his own time, we can actually trace people of his lineage all the way to today, for sure. Video games are a lot of fun. Okay, I guess that was fact seven, let's move on. But not only that, studies have gone on to show that playing video games can actually be very beneficial to your brain's health. Studies performed at the, <clears throat> hold on, Max Planck Institute for Human Development and Schardreide University Medicine, St. Hedwig Krankenhaus, located in Germany. I know, surprise, surprise. They investigated how video games would impact the brain by having a control group play no video games and having another group play Super Mario 64 for 30 minutes a day for two months, which actually sounds kind of fun. Let's be honest. Results show after comparing MRI scans from both before and after of both groups of people, the individuals who were instructed to play the video games had a noticeable increase in gray matter, specifically in regions of the brain that are involved in functions such as spatial navigation, memory formation, strategic planning, and fine motory skills of the hands. And they were even more pronounced in participants who desired to play more of the game. This has led scientists to know that there is a conclusive volumetric increase in brain size that can be attributed to playing specific video games. And the data has gone on to lead Simone Kuhn, the leader of the study, and her colleagues to suggest that we could use video games for therapeutical purposes, ranging from people suffering from neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's or dementia, to people suffering from mental disorders that alter or change the sizes of specific regions of the brain, such as schizophrenia or post-traumatic stress syndrome. So maybe us gamers aren't losing our minds after all. Pregnancy can definitely be an emotional and potentially rough experience, I would know. Being pregnant for nine months is quite a long time, but not the longest, and by not longest I mean try 65 years pregnant. That's right, 65 baby, or year old baby. Qian Yijin of southern China at the age of 92 had finally given birth after 65 years to what is known as a lithopedian or stone baby. This is an extremely rare phenomenon where the baby is too big to be rejected or absorbed into the mother. So chemicals are released by the mother's body to calcify the fetus in order to prevent it from decomposing and hurting the mother. In Yijan's case, she learned that the child that she was bearing died in 1948. 
and not having the money to be able to remove it, she just did nothing about it. There have only been about 250 known cases of lithopedians, so yes, they are definitely rare. And in case you're interested for the longest pregnancy having given birth to a live child, that record goes to Beulah Hunter of California. She was pregnant for 375 days, or about 12 months before giving birth to a happy, healthy baby in 1945. The U.S.-Canadian border is the longest undefended border in the world. Though the eastern border is kind of scraggly, it's this straight line I really want to talk about. Established in 1888, the border was put on the line of the 49th parallel. Besides the weird part of Minnesota, the border doesn't seem to have any weird parts on it at all. Or so you would think until we get to the province of British Columbia and the state of Washington. The border ended up going over a tiny peninsula not too far from Vancouver, British Columbia. A piece of land that really probably should have been incorporated into Canada, and even the British asked about it, and the United States wasn't about to cease any land to the British. Today the area is known as Point Roberts and is an American exclave. The population of the place is only about 1,500 people, actually not big enough to support a middle or high school. As a result, kids have to be put in a bus, go into Canada and back out the other side of Washington to go to a town known as Blaine in order to go to middle and high school. It's definitely one of the stranger border phenomenons in North America, but definitely not one of the weirdest in the world. I'm looking at you, Belgium, Netherlands, Bangladesh, and India. And last but not least, how about a spooky fact for Halloween? Thomas Edison... in the late 1880s created the first doll that could produce a substantial amount of speech, having them recite nursery rhymes. Now, talking dolls did exist about 10 years prior, typically saying mama and dada. Leave it on Edison to take someone else's idea and try to make it better. <laughs> So Edison, with his little doll, tried to jump into the doll market. He created high-quality dolls, ranging from $10 for an undressed doll, upwards to $20 for a dress doll. And when you factor that in for inflation, 10 bucks itself is worth about $260 today. Whew, and that's not even the scary part. These Edison dolls actually scared away children during the testing stages because of how horrifying the recording sounded. This was partly due to the quality of the recording equipment and the fact that the woman who was saying the nursery rhymes is like screaming them. Actually, how about you just take a listen to one of the recordings and arguably the sketchiest. Imagine waking up to that in the middle of the night. So the dolls ended up selling horribly and Edison quickly ceased production of them. So they are very rare. Edison was actually only able to sell 500 of them altogether. And yes, it was an impressive technological feat for sure. But Edison's dolls have gone on in infamy as being some of the creepiest dolls ever created. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the video. My question for you guys is, is which fact or facts did you find the most interesting? I personally found the Taiwan fact, the doll fact, and the penguin fact to be the most interesting, but I really did like them all because that's why I picked them. And with all that said and done, my name's Dale, this is Think Fact, and remember, never stop learning. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, feel free to check out some of my other content for the facts and thoughts that almost everybody missed. Have a good one.